Hello everyone, welcome to the commentary version of Raise Aerospace Simulating a Space Future 3. In this video, I aim to launch the Kumo Lunar Lander to the moon with an automated script landing it on the moon at a precise location. This is a KOS script. KOS is a scripting language for Kerbal Space Program that lets you do automated things so that I don't have to have the UI up and we can see things happening like this launch is happening with a KOS script uh, so I don't have to be controlling it. and we need to test whether we can land things in close proximity to each other on the moon and that is part of the goal here. So we've got a coordinate that the lander has to land at and we'll see how close it gets. It is launching on the Kasei rocket in its reusable mode for the first stage so it has wings so that it can eventually land at a forward location in the Bahamas and has three boosters. These are Sajita boosters. The core uses hydrogen and oxygen. The boosters use methane and oxygen. The engines on the boosters are about 1,000 kilonewtons and the core engines are about 4,000 kilonewtons or 400 tons. So the core engines can lift about 2,000 uh, 2, tons on their own, barely. Uh, and the boosters each can hoist about 500 tons. So you can see the wings there as this will eventually land at the forward location. But of course, once it separates off the first stage, it needs to have a smooth end, otherwise it's not really a plane end. So you can see I did special fairings that sort of wrap around the second stage and then retract so that the first stage ends up having a not blunt front end. And so that was a complicated animation and a novel system, though probably one that no space company will ever use. The upper stage engine here is just one of the lower stage engines with a vacuum nozzle, and so this is designed so that it has optimal capacity to lower Earth orbit, actually. Uh, otherwise, it would carry a lighter engine at the top, like the Space Launch System from NASA. They have three lighter engines because they don't really need to worry about carrying a high payload to lower Earth orbit. So it's not really optimal for this situation because it's carrying a heavier engine with more power and so we have an interim stage on top of it that will help things out uh, so that this stage doesn't have to do all the work. That also means that we're carrying more mass to low Earth orbit because we have that extra stage there. So underneath the lander there's a helper stage that will also get us into orbit around the moon. Everything there is wrapped with gold foil, as it probably would be. Uh, it's really mylar, uh, multi-layer insulation sort of deal. So off goes the lander with that little stage. There's the little stage with a smaller Hydrolox engine, hydrogen and oxygen. And so this finishes the transfer to the moon, which is what was happening there. And then this flies off to the moon and will capture around it. The lander is a peculiar sort of lander in that it has drop tanks. And, but it's designed so that the lander itself, if it could be refueled on the moon using hydrogen and oxygen, would be able to do all the stuff. So it, it, without the drop tanks, if it can be refueled on the moon, it can land on the moon, get refueled, and then get back to orbit to whatever station it needs to get to. Uh, while we don't have refueling capabilities on the moon, it needs the drop tanks. And, Everything here is hydrogen and oxygen because the moon you can get hydrogen and oxygen from because it's got some latent water but it really can't help with methane, oxygen or other fuel combinations. So we're looking to use hydrogen and oxygen mainly for our moon operations. So here we are approaching the moon and we need to capture around the moon. The capture burn takes about 800 meters per second. I did have to make sure that we were getting into an orbit that would actually be above the target location, so we are. And here we are igniting. And the engine on this helper stage is basically the equivalent of an RL-10, which is the engine on Vulcan or Atlas V's upper stage or Space Launch System's upper stage. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, an engine that is very familiar to many rockets. Anyway, here we have to redock to the drop tanks because when we launch, they have to be in line. Otherwise, well, it's too bulky, basically. It won't fit inside the special fairing that we have for the Kasei rocket. Kasei just means Mars in Japanese, by the way. It literally means Fire Star, actually. So here we are preparing to land. This is with the KOS script controlling everything. 
The first piece of music in the video and this one were from the World of Warships soundtrack and the one in the middle was from OC Remix. And I like to use the World of Warships soundtrack because they gave explicit permission for people to use the music in videos and I've taken advantage of that. So here it is landing and the goal is to land at a particular location and we'll see how it goes and I post at the end of the video the number, the distance for how close it got which was actually surprisingly far away. I thought we would be getting closer, more like 200 meters, but it didn't do so well, possibly because of some tweaks I did. This is from a camera between the main lander and the drop tanks, and so this is so that we can see the drop tanks fall away. And there they go. Uh, they're set to fall away either at a certain altitude or at a certain speed, or when the whole co combined thing is down to a certain mass, so when we've used enough of the fuel from the drop tanks. So here we go. Another surprise was how it landed. Usually it sticks to landing pretty well. Uh, I don't know whether it's just because when I record it doesn't like to or not. Uh, but here we go for the landing. And it's it's you know sort of more of more of an angle than I would have liked to see. And it starts tilting more here, which it definitely should not do. And that leads to a lot of extra horizontal. Thankfully, the, the struts are positioned in a way that sort of allows it to skid, but that wasn't helpful. They managed to survive, but that wasn't ideal. So 2.23 kilometers away from the target. Uh, barely okay. Not what I was looking for. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.